Once upon a time, in a deep blue ocean, was a haven for all sea creatures. A jealous witch lived in the swamp nearby. Every day, she would see the creatures live happily in their sanctuary. Her anger and jealousy grew, and one day, she decided that if she couldn't live in the sanctuary, nobody could. She cast a curse of desolation and sorrow onto the coral reef. But little did she know that a young axolotl would change the fate of the ocean. This axolotl was very special because the light of hope shone within him. He swam into the darkness to the deepest cave to find the celestial glow squid. He told her about the curse and she offered him two magical glowing ink sacs. The axolotl was swimming back to the surface when he caught a glimpse of a strange light emanating from a geode. The witch had moved in and was brewing all the worst and most evil potions of all time. Without her seeing him, he crept into the geode and stole a brewing stand. He now had the power to restore the coral reef to its former glory. The axolotl used the ink sacs to brew, and yes, you might be surprised, the potion of forgiveness. The axolotl threw the potion upon the witch and she disappeared. Where did she go? No one will ever know. But the ocean was well and we can all say farewell. As you've probably guessed, I became an axolotl for 100 days. I have been dying to do this video since the 1.17 update has come out. What prevented me from doing it all this time is that some other amazing content creators have already done this idea. But my love for axolotls is way too big. I mean, I just had to do this video. I'm really sorry. Two weeks ago, I became a wolf for 100 days and I just had so much fun that I could not resist being an axolotl any longer. I mean, <laughs> honestly, who could? For a bit of a challenge, I decided that I would only be allowed to eat fish throughout these 100 days, but also I will have to make my base underwater. Well then, no need to say much more, let's get straight into this video. Oh well, day one, I was tiny. But there I was, this cute little bent-necked axolotl. I plunged in the water to get some food. The fish were quite hard to kill with my bare limbs, so I had to climb up a mountain to get some wood. I finally had some basic stone tools, so I ventured my way into the depths of the ocean. On day two, I'd already found some lapis, some iron, some coal and some gold. On day three, I crept up onto the land to get some sheep to make a bed. I found an underwater ravine with a glow squid, my favorite. As an axolotl, it is in my duty to kill every single glow squid I see. I was not alone in this ravine. Loads of adorable other axolotls were there with me, so I decided to put them in buckets. I then killed off a drowned who had a nautilus shell in his hand. On day five, I found some dripstone and I thought it would look so cool if I broke it and like pressed F1 to do like the cinematic thing, but it was ridiculous, <laughs> an absolute waste of time. I twirled around in joy when I found an amethyst geode. I also picked up some glow lichen to decorate my base later on and I continued on my way. On day seven, I found a sunken ship, so I decided to loot the chests. There was some lapis, which was perfect because I wanted to use some blue stained glass for my base. I also discovered that there was a buried treasure map, so I decided to go find that treasure. After taking the treasure, I discovered three glow squids just having a disco party somewhere. It was not long before I found another sunken ship, and you can tell me all for not taking the iron ingots. I know, it's not good. I kept finding so many geodes, so I knew that wherever I went, I would find some easily. I found another treasure map in one of the chests, and I also took the potatoes. 
I have no idea why, because I'm only allowed to eat fish. I then made myself a magnificent house, which is like the dirt hut, but in the ocean. I added a trapdoor as a finishing touch, and I let one of my axolotls admire my amazing work. On day 11, I ventured out to find some more treasure chests. I don't know why, but I was now swimming sideways for some reason, so I guess you could call that axolotl drifting. I found the first treasure chest, but guess what, I had already looted it. Very, very smart, but thankfully I found the other one with loads of great loot. On day 12, I found an abandoned portal with a gold block. On day 13, there was a thunderstorm and I adore that. I was just mining. It was so relaxing and so peaceful. The next day, I arrived home to my cozy little coral hut and I decided to take over a geode. Take over because there was this skeleton um, who scared me a little bit, but I managed to kill him. This enabled me to do like a little area to start growing some trees. I then decided to start working on my aquarium slash base because I would not be the only one living in it. I would have, of course, all my axolotl friends. From day 16 to 18, it was time to go mining and I got so many diamonds. This is not true. <laughs> I didn't get many diamonds, which was a bit sad, but I found loads of other resources. I'm not sure why, but sometimes when I open my inventory, my accidental picture, whatever, would just twirl around <laughs> in circles. But I did manage to find a huge geode and I almost lost my life because that creeper exploded over me. I don't know why, I think he could sense me through the blocks. On day 19, I was finally able to cut down my underwater trees. I did quite a bit of exploring and these poor axolotls kept taking damage from the magma blocks, so that was a bit sad. And then I killed off a few mobs. And then, guess what I found? Diamonds! Well, one diamond. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I was really happy because I had struggled to find diamonds, but just one? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get more. From days 20 to 23, I found a mine shaft and I was able to explore it. And guess what? I managed to find a spider spawner with some chest. And there was actually a third chest right next to it, which was awesome. So I got loads of great loot. On day 24, I decided to make my underwater farming area a bit larger so that I could cultivate some sugarcane and some wheat. That same day, I was determined to find some cows on a nearby island and when the night came, I managed to find one and that's when I discovered that you could actually put blocks on kelp, which would be helpful when I was building. This is what an axolotl in a boat looks like. <laughs> they probably did that on purpose so that the axolotl could actually breathe underwater while being in the boat. And guys, I think I fell in love with the belly of the axolotls. I don't know, it's so cute. It was now time to get my cows to the bottom of the ocean. So I decided to make like a kind of walled up area with some water at the bottom. Then I went to get a second cow and all I had to do was push them in. And then I want when I wanted to get the water out, I kept taking their milk, so that was a bit tricky. The next two days, I went back mining, and it was really cool to be only one block high because I could cover more ground quicker, and I found some diamonds. On day 29, I did quite a bit of farming, and then I completely destroyed an island to get loads of sand because I needed a lot of glass to make my aquarium base. So if any of you find sand digging enjoyable, well, here you are. And I don't really think you can say sand digging, but whatever. <laughs> so if you're wondering what my base will be, I actually thought as I'm an axolotl, maybe I could do like a glow squid design. And I'm so not proud with the result. It just looks a bit like a weird octopus. I don't know, I'm not proud at all. 
But thankfully, my axolotls could not care less. And don't worry, I will be doing a slightly nicer build by the end of the video. The next three days, it was time for an agreeable mining time lapse once again, and I found another geode. So not long ago, I told you about the fact that I did a tutorial on my Instagram, and I do not win anything from making these tutorials. I am just making them for you to make things easier for you. So what really counts for me is if these tutorials help you, it would just make me super happy. I'm taking time off from my YouTube channel to make these tutorials, so honestly, I just really want to know if they're useful to you or not, because then if they're not, it's just a waste of time, so please tell me. Let's worry to see more videos. So, I was looking for sea pickles and I actually found another sunken ship um, right next to my base that I hadn't found, so that was a really nice discovery. On day 39, I found once again another geode, so I took all the crystals and the blocks and I went a bit crazy on the moss. <laughs> I got loads of azalea trees. I don't know where I was going to put them because I lived underground, but yeah, <laughs> that's just me. And I bought back these three adorable turtles to kind of bring life to the aquarium. I then used the amethyst blocks to do an outline around my glow squid and some axolotls got away, cheeky ones. From days 40 to 45, it was finally time to make a mob farm slash mob spawner. <laughs> I'm not sure what you say. Um, so I decided to make this time lapse and isn't it so cute to watch a little axolotl build? I actually have a question, so I might get my idea stolen, maybe, but my question is, should I do 100 days as a blaze or a ghast? Because like a ghast, it would be quite interesting because, you know, they're huge, so it would be super tricky. But the issue is that when you open the inventory, the, the ghast picture is just like huge and you can't really see um, the inventory at all, you know, so would that interest you or... Do you think it's not a good idea? I know this has nothing to do with the video, but I like to reach out to you and know what you like. On day 46, I was finally able to start enchanting and I got Fortune 3 as a first enchantment, which was awesome. On day 47, I was finally able to start making some diamond armor, which was really cool, and I got respiration on my helmet, which would be perfect for the nether because axolotls can't survive more than five minutes out of the water. And so began the long AFK days. So I just decided to do a time lapse of all the mobs falling. <laughs> I don't know if it's interesting or relaxing. I don't know. <laughs> but at least you can see that the mob spawner was really working well. I mean, making it over an ocean is just perfect. It really, really worked well. And then when I started hitting them, it was so satisfying. I was getting so many enchants from it. I loved it. I managed to get Silt Touch on my pickaxe and then I decided I would sail over to the massive island. And why? Why would I do that? It's because I was struggling to find like a lot of diamonds and I saw on internet that desert biomes, massive biomes are the best for finding diamonds. So. I thought, why not? And oh boy, did it work. I found loads of diamonds, like really all super close to each other. So that was awesome. Um, and I was thinking, would you be interested in a video like five ways, five best ways to find diamonds? Because I've been learning so much from these 100 day videos that I would feel confident making one of these videos. On day 51, I finally returned home a happy axolotl because I had loads of diamonds. I could finish my diamond armor and make all the tools I wanted. So from days 52 to 60, it was enchanting time. So I was hitting these mobs and then I was enchanting and hitting and enchanting. What a joyful <laughs> couple of days. So the good enchantments I got was, for example, protection four on my armor, and I also got infinity on my bow. I then bred all my axolotls and my turtles. 
On day 61, I decided to make my nether portal to go exploring, but as I was an axolotl and couldn't survive more than five minutes out of water, I had to be very careful. I couldn't just enter the nether from anywhere and try and find the fortress. I had to do that in the overworld. So yeah, I decided to first go to the Badlands and I was not close to any nether fortress. So yeah, I just continued on my way. I went into the nether in a mountain biome and found a warp forest. So I went in the direction of the warp forest in the overworld, so which took ages. And then to make that portal in the spruce forest, I almost died because yeah, I forgot that you cannot make a portal with crying obsidian. And of course, this was all for nothing because the warp forest measured two centimeters. <laughs> it was tiny. So yeah, I just continued on my way. On day 65, I went back into the nether and this time I arrived super close to a huge warp forest and on the other side was the nether fortress. I was delighted. Um, I went into the warp forest to start getting some ender pearls. Sadly, I did not have looting on my sword, so yeah, getting enough ender pearls was definitely going to be hard. To take a break from enderman killing, I actually went back in the overworld in the direction of the nether fortress so that I would arrive inside it. I killed my first blaze and I was super lucky because I got a blaze rod and I was delighted that the blaze spawner was actually super close to my portal. So yeah, I just spent the next few days killing all these blazes and almost dying a few times, but <laughs> don't worry, everything was under control. Well, I think it was. <laughs> Of course, all good things must end and I had to return in the overworld because um, I really needed to get back into some water. On day 69, I went back into the nether to be able to get some nether warts and I also decided to get a bit of glowstone because maybe it could add to my glow squid aquarium. On day 70 to 76, it was time to get all these ender pearls and this took quite some time and I actually almost died a few times even though I was being quite careful. <laughs> so yeah, I was just hitting and hitting and hitting some endermen. And of course, I stopped recording and forgot to start recording again. Great, great titsy, great. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm just super thankful that I was recording when I killed the blazes, when I found like the nether warts and everything or else, oh my god, this video would have been ruined. But I finally made my home back and oh my, look at all these adorable axolotls. <laughs> With the blaze rods, I was finally able to make a brewing stand and I brewed some potions of strength for the ender dragon. And then I decided to put two of my diamond swords together, which took a lot of levels. But guess what I did just after? I decided to name all my axolotls with names that you have suggested in the comments of my videos. I just thought it would be a fun way to incorporate you in my videos. Just, you know, naming all my axolotls. So. If you can see a name you suggested, well, I'm super happy about that. There was one name that was super funny. It was Toot Ache. It was like a mix of um, Rake and me, but <laughs> I thought it was funny, like Toothache, you know? Oh, and as you can see, by the end of all that naming, I had zero levels, but I didn't mind because I would be getting 60 levels at the Ender Dragon fight if I survive. <laughs> so yeah, I was just hoping everything would go well. And then I started breeding all the axolotls and I was really hoping to get a blue one. And now for the most cursed moment of this video. I'm so sorry you had to see that. 
but an axolotl riding a horse is terrifying. I mean, the axolotl is inside the horse. This is horrible. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, I did not bring the horse back because no, this this image was was terrible. <laughs> I then decided to get an upgrade from the Glow Squid Aquarium for myself, so I made a cute little house and I used some warped wood um, to add like a blue texture to my build. Because I did not find an ocean temple, which meant that my only blue block was coral and warped wood, I think you could call it, so yeah. On day T2, I decided to do a bit of fishing while I was waiting for the phantoms to spawn. I then realized that some of my axolotls had escaped and they were all getting killed by drowned. So I immediately avenged my departed friends. When the morning came, I went back into the glow squid aquarium to try and find the hole they were all coming out of. But I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find it somehow. Sadly, I lost a lot of axolotls, especially the ones that I had given a name, which was really, really sad. Nevertheless, it was time to do the Ender Dragon, so I went on my way and forgot that I had to actually throw an Ender Eye first. Yes, very, very smart. <laughs> I was actually going towards the Badlands and it wasn't in that direction, so thankfully I remembered. I then arrived in a spruce forest, and I realized that I had to go the other way round, which meant that I had passed the stronghold. I dug my way down and found this stronghold and I actually found a library with some pretty good enchanting books. One of them even had mending, which is honestly one of the best enchantments you can get. On day 85, I finally found the portal, so I filled it up went in and guess what happened it lagged and then i was falling into the sky and i was like oh my god this is over but it was just a lag i don't know so thank god this totally freaked me out so i forgot to drink my slow falling potion and when i remembered i couldn't drink it because it was just too laggy and it was not because of the shaders it's just my pc is slow but don't worry i will do something about that soon I started destroying the towers with my bow and I wasn't having too many issues at first. But then I arrived at a tower with some metal bars and I blew it up immediately. But the second one, I don't know why, but I simply couldn't explode it. So I tried loads and loads of times and then I decided I should maybe do the higher towers and get back to it. And I almost died. Yeah, uh, I was really too close and uh, this almost was the end. Great. But trust me, the nightmare wasn't over. When the dragon came down, I drank my strength potion to go hit him, but I forgot I measured a slab high, not even a block, so I really, really struggled to hit the dragon. When playing with my normal skin, I don't find the ender dragon too hard, I mean it's quite hard but not too much, but there, being an axolotl, it was horrible. It was the first time that I hated the ender dragon fight, I was not enjoying myself. It was really frustrating not to be able to hit the dragon, like I had to block up and then sometimes he would just hit me off. So yeah, this was not um, a nice fight. Of course, I'd bought some water over so that I could go in it from time to time. And I had to finish off that dragon with the bow. <laughs> and I'm not very good with the bow, but I managed and yippee, finally this fight is over. But I mean, if you're up for a challenge, I would really recommend you doing the Ender Dragon fight, being an axolotl, because, well, maybe it's just because I'm not a very good player, but I found it quite hard. 
On day 86, it was all over and I finally was able to make my way home. At one point I passed over a bubble column and it made the axolotl in the boat move and that was pretty funny. Days 87 to 100, well, I completely went crazy. So my plan was to get a blue axolotl because I really wanted to get one. Uh, and I think I totally underestimated how hard it is to get. <laughs> So first of all, I had to move all my axolotls from the aquarium to an area on land so that it would be easier to feed them tropical fish. And then of course I had to get all the tropical fish. I mean, I'm really, really happy that I lived in a coral reef because it made things much easier. By the way, I just wanted to point out that we do not call fish like a group of fish or a flock of fish. We say a school of fish. I know that most of you probably already know that, but um, if it would really make me happy if I managed to teach that to even one person, I would really be happy about that. By the way, up to half of the world's coral reefs have already been lost or severely damaged. If you're wondering why coral reefs are so important, first of all, they protect coastlines from storms and erosion. Over half a billion people depend on reefs for food, income and protection throughout the world. A few quick facts on tropical fish. So first of all, you know that they are super colorful and that is because they use the color to communicate and attract attention. Tropical fish also use their patterns and colors to camouflage themselves in their environment. A third fact that I found super interesting is that the fish actually use their color sometimes as a warning to other fish like to say that they are poisonous. As you can see at one point I actually fell into the axolotl pond. Um, so yeah a few got away and I had to chase them back but yeah I managed to find them all in the end. Time for a few facts on the axolotls. So, you know they have six branches on their head, but they are not just for show. These are actually their gills and they increase the surface area for gas exchange. While you can find axolotls everywhere in the world, in aquariums or shops, there is actually only one place in the world where they live in the wild, which is in Mexico. So, as you know, Minecraft put the axolotls in really recently, and that is because they are very endangered species as a result of habitat loss, pollution, and the introduction of invasive species. So, as you can see, I realized that it would be too hard to spot a blue axolotl if I let all the colors together, so I did different ponds for different colors. So I worked at this for hours and hours uh, and I'm super disappointed uh, that I didn't get a blue one. So I'm going to continue. There it's Sunday when I'm saying that. It's just a day before I'm posting and I'm going to continue trying to find a blue axolotl. So if I didn't manage, I'm really super sorry and promise I will show you on my Instagram the snippet of when I get one because I will continue working on that. I will get that blue axolotl. Thank you so much for watching. This makes me really happy and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I have a quick announcement to make for all those of you who are still here. It means you are dedicated viewers. And, um, as you probably noticed, I am almost at 90k and I will be doing a face reveal at 100k subscribers. But I would like you all to make some fan arts because I will actually be putting them on the wall behind me in the face reveal video. So if you like drawing or if you want to do a fan art, you can send it to me on my Instagram at Tootsie YouTube. Love you! I have no idea why because I wouldn't be needing and I fat I mean they probably did that on purpose because so
So not long ago, I... So I would really... That I would be... And I was not... Cl I went into the nether in... So I... So yeah, I just spent... And oh my god, look at all the... And then I started breathing all the axolotls. An axolotl, but an axolotl 